right before we jump into this video, if you haven't signed up for the Fronos Photo email list, you can do so. Just click inside this orange box, put your name, email address in it, hit send it, and I'll send you a free guide to capturing motion in low light situations. Jared Poland, Fronos Photo. .com. And Steven and I got the opportunity to go up to Brooklyn, New York to do something super secret from DJI because they just released the DJI Inspire 1. This is an all new drone that falls right in the middle of their lineup. You have your DJI Phantom, which is your low end, kind of like a DX camera. You have your S800 and your S900s. Those fall in like a 1DX or a D4S. And this I'm saying is gonna fall in kind of at the entry level pro market, something like a D610 in a, uh, it, this is the way that I can equate it to cameras. It's falling right in the middle. They're saying it's gonna be about three thousand dollars and let me tell you what it's about let's go through these specs it's carbon fiber and very easy to set up it is so easy to set up that all you have to do is put the props on and you're basically ready to go and if you see this thing it looks like it's straight out of judgment day kind of like when you activate skynet it's going to come around the corner and start shooting you except it's going to be shooting you with video. And let's talk about the video that it has and the capabilities that it has. It has a three-way access gimbal. They call this the payload. Now it's a changeable payload. So in the future, you may be able to change different cameras depending on what they come out with. But the camera that it has is a 4K camera that I'm being told is very close to quality, if not on par with the 4K quality coming out of the new uh, GoPros. So also they did away with the fisheye lens. It's no longer a fisheye lens. DJI made this camera, so you're shooting 4K footage at 24 frames a second or 30, 1080 at 60 frames a second, and you're recording 65 megabit data rate. That's very important when you're recording. You can record in MOV or in MP4, and you can shoot still images as DNGs or JPEGs, but with the video, you have full manual control. That's a good thing. I didn't talk about the weight, but it, it weighs, what, 2.9 kilos or about six pounds. So that, it has some heft to it, but as you see, we were out in the wind and this thing was flying around and holding its own in really heavy wind gusts. We were right off the water in Brooklyn and it was, it was not a nice day. It was cold, it was windy, it was rainy, and this thing did very well. So it flies for 18 minutes on a battery charge, which is pretty darn good for what it's offering. Uh, full manual controls, I said, for, via, uh, for video via the all new app. It's an all new app that is just, it is laid out much better than the old ones. So it's very nice to get in there and have controls. Oh, and it was really cool because you have a new controller and the new controller has a built in rechargeable battery, but better than that, it has HDMI plug on the back, it has a USB plug on the back, it had some kind of other video link plug on the back, but what does this mean? Well, you go with your USB and you can go out to an iPad. You can use your iPad as a monitor, you can use goggles as a monitor, and the, rem the remote that we used didn't have a, a, a stand yet to hold the iPad, but that's probably coming later that they're going to include it. But we are sitting there with the iPad getting a 1080 downlink from the DJI as it's filming or as it's, you're getting the preview. It's a full 1080 that you're getting on your screen. So you've got that. You have the HDMI that you could do HDMI out to a Atomos Ninja or something or any of the Atomoses and that probably would not be a clean out you'd probably record the actual screen from the DJI but that uh, yeah from the uh, from the app that would be pretty good so we talked about the new remotes but what's even better is you can, you know how with the with the Phantom you had to fly it yourself and take pictures and you had to control everything well in this case you can connect two controllers to it one person can fly it and the other person can sit in the car where it's not cold and windy and control the way that the camera is shooting. That is an unbelievable feature to have. It also has the ability to just press a trigger and that's going to shoot your still images. You have your iris control and everything built around the remote as well. So DJI really stepped up their game with this remote. Very nice options that they have in there. It's fast and stable. It, they said 25 miles an hour flight speed. That's pretty darn quick. And when, when he just let it sit there in the wind, it was, it was stable. It was fighting the wind and, and, and basically finding its GPS location even better. Oh, and if you ever have to fly it indoors, you know how hard it is to get GPS locations if you've ever tried to fly one before indoors. It has a down-facing stereoscope camera. What that does is it finds the ground so that it can read the, the, it can read the level so that it can keep its 
itself level and stable in case you lose the GPS or you need to fly it inside. That is an awesome addition. Retractable gear. When I saw it, I thought that the gear actually retracted, but no, it just rotates in and out like that. Just, you'll see it. We have the video playing so that you can see that happen. And this was a real hands-on preview. So what do I think about it? I think that if you're a photographer or somebody who's getting into the game of shooting drones or using drones and you've had a Phantom and you, you want something better, you don't want to have to go get something else to put a GoPro onto. You don't want to have to pay more money to retrofit it and use that and get the downlinks and get the goggles and get all of that. This is all built in with a new DJI camera. You can change the filters so they had a... a a polarizing filter that you can put on the front. There's a lot of different options. It's fast, it's quick, it's stable. It was great to get a hands-on to finally see something early being used. And the battery life at 18 minutes isn't bad at all. So we have a lot of the specs over on the website. We also have the 4K video footage that you can check out on your own. You can click on the screen right now. It's gonna take you over to just the 4K footage so that you can see it, but really, if you're looking to up your game in the drone sphere, this is going to do it with the 4K ability. This thing is really, really nice. I, like I said, it falls in on the pro end of it, kind of like your first FX camera. It's not DX, it's not the highest end, but it is a great place to start. And honestly, not terribly too expensive if you're making money doing things like this. So I have to thank DJI for giving us the super secret call to get a hands-on preview before it was even announced. The one that we got to see was only one of 10 in the world. Oh, it only comes in white, by the way. I did ask to see if it comes in colors. So there you have it. That's the preview. Check it out. Jared Poland, froknowsphoto.com. See ya. Have you subscribed to the YouTube channel yet? If not, go ahead, click the subscribe button. You can get the videos as soon as they go live because there are a lot of them. But if you want to check out the DJI Inspire One 4K footage, go ahead and click on the screen right now. It's going to take you over to that video to see the 4K footage.